Hi. Chapter 3 is probably the least exciting, but probably the most important chapter in your textbook. And it deals with measurements and their uncertainty, as well as a couple of other things that we're going to be building upon for the rest of the year. So, measurements. Measurement is a quantity that has both a number and a unit. It's all too common. I'll see students measure something out or write down something like 2.1 with nothing after it. A number by itself means nothing in science, especially chemistry. It's always crucial to put the unit, whether it's 2.1 meters, grams, centimeters, milliliters, whatever it might be. Without the unit, the answer is going to be 100% wrong because it means nothing. All right. How do you deal with very large or very small numbers? Going to be a lot of numbers or sizes or quantities or measurements of the things we're going to deal with are extremely small or extremely large. So really important to remember scientific notation. Okay. An example, one gram of hydrogen contains approximately, let's see, 100,000, million, billion, trillion, quadrillion, quintillion, 602 sextillion hydrogen atoms. Imagine every time you had to do a calculation with this, punching all those numbers into the calculator. You'd go out of your mind, which is why we use scientific notation. This is the same as this, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Another example, a gold atom has a mass of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, so we would write that out as 3.27 times 10 to the negative 22. We'll, we'll, of course, do some castle learning clicker activities of this in class to make sure that everybody can do it. Okay. Accuracy and precision. I generally think of them being the same thing, but they're not quite. But when you're measuring something, how close your measurement comes to the actual value deals with accuracy usually has to do with the quality of the tool you're using rather whether it's a ruler a balance graduated cylinder or the like precision is how well you use it if you measure the same thing a number of times each one should be the same the more likely or the closer they are to being the same the more precise so you kind of have to to figure out precision, you have to measure something a number of times. And you won't be perfect. That's where error comes into play. Error is the difference between an experimental value and the accepted value. For example, if you're boiling water and you measure it at 99.1 degrees Celsius, that would be your experimental value. However, you should have memorized already that the actual boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. Okay? So to figure out your error, you would say, all right, well, the measured value, which is 99.1, minus the accepted value, which is 100, right, we should say degrees Celsius, degrees Celsius is equal to minus 0 0.9. But something important I left out here, because it wasn't coming out on the computer that day, is that this is the absolute value, which means whether it's negative or positive in your answer, we always turn it into positive. Okay, so the error here is 0 0.9. Now, one thing you're going to have to calculate for the regents is percent error, which is this measured value minus the accepted, but now divided by the accepted. Okay? And that's going to give you here 0.9% error. But less than a percent error is not too bad. And this formula, fortunately, you don't have to memorize it. It's from your reference table, T. 
Okay, that part was easy. Now it starts to get a little trickier as we start to deal with significant figures. How many numbers before or after the decimal do you use? And that's always going to depend on initially the quality of the instrument you use. But then it's also going to depend on math. Okay. So, significant figures, sig figs as we call them, include all the digits that are measured plus one that is estimated. So in this example, right, it's, you have 11.123456, 11.6 plus this little bit here that we can estimate. Okay, so if we say 11.6, eh, 6. So I would say 11.66 centimeters, which this ruler being pretty good gives us one, two, three, four significant figures. And we're going to talk about that. Okay. When you measure something, it always has to be reported to the correct number of significant figures. Now we can see down here, some measuring instruments are more precise than others. If I were to look at this, right, it's 0.5 meters would be in the middle. So I'd say, yeah, it might be closer to 0.6. This one, I could say, all right, it's a little bigger than 0.6 meters, so we can estimate that to be, or measure it to 0.61. However, this one down here is much more precise, and we can see it's not quite 0.61, so we can say yeah, 0 0.607 meters. One significant figure, two significant figures, three significant figures. Now, how do I know that? Well, there are significant figure rules, and these are just going to have to, at first, kind of memorize, but then you'll get used to them. All right, so the rules are every non-zero digit is significant. So in this case, one, two, three non-zeros, so there's three significant figures. One, two, three non-zeros, one, two, three non-zeros, so all have three significant figures. Zeros between non-zeros are significant. So, non-zeros are significant for sure, but since these zeros are between non-zeros, we have one, two, three, four significant figures. Same here, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So all have four significant figures. Leading zeros are not significant. And by leading zeros, I mean leading zeros or zeros at the beginning of the number. So these three zeros are leading. This zero is leading. These zeros here, since they're all at the beginning, are leading. So since there's two non-zeros, two non-zeros, two non-zeros, all of these have two significant figures. Zeros at the end of a number and after a decimal are always significant. So since these are both after a decimal and they're at the end of the number, they would be significant. So there's one, two, three, four significant figures. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All are significant. Pretty much, unless it's the number starting with a zero point something like these do, any numbers after the decimal would be significant, unless it's a zero before the decimal. Now, zeros at the end of a number without a decimal are not significant. So since there's no decimal here, there's only one significant figure. No decimal, only one. No decimal, only one. Let's say, however, I wrote 300 point. Well, since there's a decimal, this would have one, two, three significant figures. If I wrote 300.0, I would have one, two, three, four significant figures. And sometimes you get into something where it's an integer. Like if I count how many students are in the class, I can't have half a student. Well, maybe if you don't do your homework, you can only count as half a student. But really, I can't have 
part of a student. So that would be if I counted 12 students or 25 students in the class, those would be integers and they have unlimited significant figures. We wouldn't say 25.0 students or 0 .0000 students because that would be kind of crazy and dumb. But we say 25 students, we understand it's an integer. So it has unlimited significant figures. Now, where these really become important is when you use them in calculations. Now, a calculated answer cannot be more precise than the least precise measurement. Okay? So, we're going to go over the rules for significant figures in addition and subtraction first. So, here, you round to the same number of decimal places as the least precise measurement. For example, let's say we have 12.52 plus 349.0 plus 8.24. All right. Well, let's see. How many significant figures just for kicks? Well, this one has four. Come on. Okay. This one has four. This one has one, two, three, four. This one has three. Okay. But... We're talking the least precise measurement. So the least precise measurement is one after the decimal. So our answer can have one after the decimal. So we plug all these into a calculator, we get 369.76. But since we can only have one thing after the decimal, we have to round this to 369.8. Now multiplication and division are quite a bit different. Here, you round to the same number of significant figures as the least precise measurement. Addition subtraction is the same number of decimal places. And multiplication division is the least number of significant figures. So, let's say we do 2.4256 times 8.4. Okay? How many significant figures here? One, two, three, four, five. So there's five significant figures. But here there's two significant figures. So we plug it into a calculator, we get 0 0.291976. However, since our least precise measurement had two significant figures, that's all we can put in our answer. So we have to round it to 0 0.29. We are going to be practicing an awful lot of these in class until everybody can pretty much get it right all the time. So if you want to go back and rewind this and go through these rules again on the previous slide, as well as these couple of little practice things on here, that could be very useful. All right. See you guys in school.